There's two critical concepts for product managers, who you work with and what you own. Today's topic is fascinating. Okay, okay. Organizational design is kind of dull in general, but how this is done for product development teams is actually fascinating. Product managers have a super important role in tech companies. They keep the technology teams focused. You, the PM, figure out what your team should build with limited time and resources, and you have to do whatever it takes to make your product great. So. Who the heck is your team and what the heck is your product? That's why you're here. Let's start with who you work with. Product managers are part of the technical side of the business and on a day-to-day -day basis, they work really closely with the other technical functions like engineering, product design, data, and UXR. Many companies will take the people in these technical functions and break them up into small cross-functional teams. These teams are groups of people from different departments with different specialties who come together to work on a specific part of the product. The teams usually consists of a product manager, a product designer, an engineering manager or tech lead, and at least two engineers. These groups are usually called a product team, a squad, or a pod. You might be lucky enough to have additional specialists on your cross-functional team, like a data scientist, a UX researcher, product marketing manager, and maybe even a team mascot. The cross-functional team works together day to day, and it's your job as the product manager to figure out what this team should be working on. Hey team, today we're kicking off Project Dragonfruit. Hooray! Hooray! But don't let that power get to your head. You gotta remember you're not the boss of the team. Hey tech lead, you're fired. No, Sandra, we're partners. You can't fire me, sorry. So you need to lead through influence, which I have a whole course on. So now we know who your team is, but what is your product? Don't worry, it's usually not the entire product. At a small company, product managers might look after the entire product, but that's only possible if the product is relatively small. Large products need more PMs, and those PMs take responsibility over a portion of the product. And these portions are product areas. Your product area is the set of functionality and user experience experiences that you and your team are responsible for. As a team, you will own your product area. You will have a mission statement, a strategy, some goals, and a roadmap. And you're responsible for the long-term success of that area. And you'll become experts in that area because you're dedicated to it. Here's an example of how this worked at Spotify. This is old from 2012. Spotify published a report that year explaining how they organize their agile teams. And it was really smart. So a lot of tech companies have been following the Spotify Spotify model ever since. The Spotify app doesn't look like this anymore, but it's helpful to see how the squads were responsible for different parts of the app. The mobile experience, playlists, recommendations, and the music player were distinct product areas with different teams. So for a PM, your product isn't all of Spotify, maybe it's just the playlists. The way a company breaks down product areas is a big clue about what's important to the company. Putting a team in charge of a particular product area is essentially an investment in that area. It's a big, important decision. The boundaries around product areas are usually determined by either business goals, user experiences, or technologies, or some combo of all three. Here's a super duper made up example. Let's say you work at a company that is a two-sided marketplace. Your users are buyers, people who buy stuff, and sellers, people who sell stuff. And let's say that there are 10 PMs at the company. The head of product might decide to divide the product areas like so. You'll have teams responsible for the two big types of users. A buyer experience team will have a PM who is focused on all the features for people who buy stuff. Let's call them PM1. You also have a seller experience. So you have a PM2 who is covering all the features for selling stuff like setting up your online store. These are two product areas and they are defined by user experience boundaries. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to carve out a product area by user type if all users need that functionality. For example, messaging or search. So you might have PMs in charge of centralized technologies, right? Buyers and sellers both need messages. So it doesn't make sense to have two PMs oversee one technology. In these cases, you might want to have a centralized product area categorized by, you guessed it, technology boundaries. Instead of focusing on a single type of user, they are focused on how all users interact with a particular type of technology and the product. Finally, there could be specific business goals that need PMs. These product areas could cover features related to those goals, like 
new user acquisition for a growth team, net new business for a moonshots team, and operational efficiency for an internal tools team. Those are all business goals, so you'd have a PM for those business goal boundaries. I have more details in my Substack, links below. This is just an example, and every company will define their product areas differently. As a PM, your product area is your scope. And this is a big deal when you're trying to promote to the next level. Your scope usually grows as you get more senior. You'll be responsible for a bigger and bigger portion of the product. There are pros and cons to having small cross-functional teams with distinct product areas. Pros, usually these small teams innovate faster. They become experts in their area and have autonomy over it so they can make decisions, build, and learn faster. Downsides, if these teams don't talk to each other enough, your whole product will be super inconsistent where every product area feels different and disjointed. So PMs should get together regularly to compare notes and to make sure that you keep your product consistent for users. The small team model doesn't work for all companies. This is a common way to organize product development teams, but every company has unique needs, goals, and staffing constraints. So your company might look different and org structures should evolve. Nothing is static. Lots of people copy the Spotify model, but even Spotify doesn't work that way anymore. How do we know? Let's ask Gustav. And so it was very good for where we were at the time, and it certainly helped us in recruiting. It's, it's become a little bit of a, of a cost to us because people still think that we organize that way. And it's not a very efficient way of being organized at this scale, or, or maybe even if you started over right now because we've learned more. So change is normal. Organization structures evolve over time to meet the changing needs of your business, as Gustav says. So go with the flow. You got this.